ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of Eveco. So not on the show, we're going to be announcing the giveaway winners uh, for the community question of the week. Uh, and uh, we're going to take a look at the patch notes uh, for Wednesday. And of course, we're going to dive deep into the public test server updates that uh, we will be... Um, getting in order to test until the May deployment. So let's keep this short and dive right through the first subject. Um, the community question of the week was, if exploration turns out to be profitable, will you completely abandon PvE? Uh, the first winner is Arjun Call. We'll switch to exploration full time. Lately, PvPing isn't so much fun. I do PvE, but never spawn anomalies. Just scout. Exploration will fit just right in for my PvP PvE null fantasy. Back in EVE Online, I was a 100% explorer guy. I was only scanning and generating my ISK only from that. So if this do does turn out to be profitable, um, we may see a switch in the player base to some specific content, mainly scanning. But in EVE Echoes, we have no idea if scanning will be as profitable as it, as it is in EVE Online. Mostly because we are unaware of what exactly can we scan down? But we do know we will be able to scan down people. And that's why Arjun Cole mentioned a lot of PvP involvement. Moving over to the next winner, we've got Sarah Santos with the comment, I'm very curious about exploration, but I won't abandon PvE because that's what I like to do in the game anyway. Encounters, some missions are the only thing in a game that can be done solo and safe from PvP. Well, once scanning goes down, not anymore, unless you specifically pick up the missions that happen in high sec. If you go to low sec, you might end up scanned once exploration gets launched. I appreciate a part of the game dedicated to people that can't be many hours online and need to get some things done and then move on. Completely agree with that. I like to group content for when I have more time and I don't think exploration is going to be other than a PvP fest. I will try it with my peeps if they are up for it. Well, it's going to be a lot more than just PvP. I mean, the main goal is to scan stuff down and obtain blueprints, materials and whatever um, exploration might offer to us. Yet, we do not know exactly what it will be offering to us. So congratulations, Sarah Santos and Arjun Cole. Please leave a comment below with your in-game name and your character ID so I can pass that information down to the people responsible handing out the prizes. Now remember to stick around until the end of this video because we will be launching yet another community question of the week with yet two more Omega Combo clones as prizes for two randomly picked winners next week. Let's continue our video for today with the patch notes that correspond to the version that was launched today, Wednesday, 21st of April. The first thing that we notice every patch is <laughs> the estimated prices update accordingly to the current market transaction records. This should be automated, people. Why are you still having manual work for this? It should be an automated script an automated API and whatever you want to do. There's many options for it. This is time wasted. Item number two references to the uh, public test server being opened on the uh, April 22nd, which will last until uh, April 28th. Once I saw this, these patch notes, I immediately started a mini rant because this was referenced in the patch notes, yet we did not have any information or updates regarding the public test server, at least at that time. It came a few hours later in the form of an announcement on Discord. We get there in a, mo in a few moments. The good thing worth mentioning from this item number two is the fact that we'll be able to reset our skills uh, once we log into the public test server so we can put the skills in whatever we want to test whatever we want. A good quality of life, and now tapping apply on the recommended fittings page no longer unfits rigs. This was a nasty piece of work. A lot of players lost their rigs just because they hit the apply button. I'm hoping that the tickets were sold and the rigs were compensated. But nonetheless, this fix is something good that was deployed. Item number six. 
Uh, we have no idea if this is referring to contracts, but I think it ties to contracts. If your corporation Citadel access has been revoked and the Citadel is in Nolsic, of course, items that are being sent to you will now be delivered to the nearest ITC. I'm guessing some people will just kicked out of the corporation and having items contracted to them, not being able to dock there was a major impediment. So now that stuff is being transferred to, to local ITCs. Item number seven. This is clearly the corporation auditing that I kept mentioning. Uh, it was the last item on the list of April. After redeeming items from the corporation delivery hangar, you can view the player who performed the action, the redeemed item and the station involved in the wallet payment log. This is part of that specific update. We get to see on item number 9, the new corporation industry mechanic, the one that we showcased a couple of videos ago. Players with the following permissions, Corporation Industry and Corporation Hangar can initiate industrial manufacturing or reverse engineering jobs directly using materials in Corporation Hangars. There was no specific info on how to do that in the screenshots that we got, but I'm guessing that you can select the, the location for the blueprint, you can select the location of the minerals that you want to use for building process, so all is good, but be aware, keep a lookout for bugs. It would be sad if uh, blueprints and materials started to randomly disappear, am I right? <laughs> Out of the bug fixes, I think the most important one is number three. Fix an issue where ships with the ability to switch modes cannot be placed back into the corporation hangar after assembly. Pretty much selected everything that I thought was important out of the patch notes. The rest is, for me is just filling. At least maybe some might have a little bit more importance, but these are the main figures that I consider important uh, that were implemented and launched and deployed, hopefully bug free, in this April 21st version. Now let's dive deeper into that number two item uh, regarding the public test server being mentioned. The announcement with the updates for the public test server was posted on Discord a couple of hours afterwards. And it's good because it links towards the eveechoes.com main page uh, where the news resides. Now, after reading these at first glance, I remembered one thing. Uh, it was in a specific game. It was called Prince of Persia, The Two Thrones. At the end, when the Vizier dies, he yells in pain. This is not what the dagger promised. I had pretty much the same disappointment. Kind of felt like the Vizier. There's a couple of stuff that are good in the updates in regards to the balance update that the Evecos game will be receiving. At least we'll be able to test them out. Hopefully they will be explored, tagged, bugged and fixed. Um, by the devs until the May version is deployed. That is, you, you guys, pilots, players, identify what you think is wrong because there's a lot of wrong here. So on the public test server we'll be getting the new tech level 10 ships. 47 new tier 10 ships will be added to the game. That is the Heron, the Probe, the Magnate and the Imicus, the Explorer versions, basically because it's exactly how I thought it would go down. So exploration is going to hit, but we will not be getting the Sisters of Eve ships. This is why the variants of Explorer will be introduced instead. Also because Sisters of Eve ships are broken in terms of balance, or at least unbalance, or the unbalance that they would bring into the game if they will be released. We also get an additional Rack of Bombers, we got the Manticore, the Hound, the Purify, and the Nemesis. Type 3, what the hell is Type 3 mean anyway? I guess we'll be looking at those uh, tomorrow once the public test server opens up. But what can you put on those? I mean, we've got the standard Bombers, the Mark 1 variants that fit medium torpedoes. We've got the Mark 2 variant which fit large torpedoes which are shit by the way unless you're shooting at battleships using them to get to take down like even mining barges is completely out of the question because they suck so bad so what could the mark 3 or the type 3 variants use rapids <laughs> i don't know 
We're also getting uh, Mark III interdictors in terms of destroyers. We've got the Cormoran Thrasher, uh, the Coercer, the Catalyst. Again, what the hell do those mean? What could they possibly have better? I mean, of course, maybe extra uh, slots in terms of fitting, and maybe some extra bonuses, but that's not what the player base needed right now. We also get some Mark II variants of uh, Korax Salvar, uh, Dragoon and Argos, uh, the Assault versions. We also get Caracal 2, Stabber 2, Omen 2, Vexer 2, Osprey. There's a lot of Mark 2, or at least Type 2 variants of Cruisers. I have no idea what the bonuses on those will be. I guess we'll have to check the public test server when that launches tomorrow. We also get some Mark 3 variants of the Covert Ops Cruisers, which is pretty interesting. Uh, they're going to be tech level 10, but again, EVE is not about just going up in terms of tiers and grabbing the top tiered ship and using just that. EVE was supposed to be something about using every ship that can be identified as a potential threat to any other enemy, depending on the situation. But given the current circumstances and how the ship tier tree uh, at least that is they're being made and the ships being pushed down the line it clearly gives us the picture that once you get to the next upgrade the next level basically everything that's below that is going to be completely unused take for example the mark ii variants of the interceptors once you get that those things are even better than the dramiel so what is the point if you everyone is going to stop using the Mark 1 variants of the Interceptors because we'll have Mark 2. Of course, there's, there's going to be people that will still fly them because they will, I don't know, still be at a lower tier level or tech level. But you get my point. Once you get up in that tech level, there's no incentive in using ships in tiers below because they're completely eclipsed by everything else that's above. We also get some uh, variants of the command ships like Cyclone, the Mimidon, Drake Guardian ships, Brutix Guardian, Naga 3, Tornado 3, Oracle, Tornado 3, what the fuck is that? Tempest 2, Typhoon 2, Dominix, Tempest 2, these are some interesting, weird stuff. Suddenly the ship tree looks completely blurry and I have no idea what, what all of these ships mean. One thing that really upsets me and kind of boggles my mind, we get nine ships have been removed from the game. I point out uh, when I did the ship tree reviews for every faction, what the hell are those destroyer covert ops doing on tech level 10? So they get removed <laughs> now, but they're in also removing the Maelstrom, which was the third battleship of the Minmetar. Why is this being removed? I mean, why re just remove the Maelstrom and not remove the Hyperion? Why not remove the Abaddon? Why not remove the Rock? Because it it's the third battleship, the tech level 10 battleship of each faction. Why remove the Maelstrom? This makes absolutely no goddamn sense. We get the large freighters, uh, which is the Providence, Fenrir, Sharon and the Obelisk. I really hope they will have a bigger cargo hold and not a delivery hold. We've been played in the past, <laughs> stating that 20,000 cubic meters of cargo hold and it was actually delivery hold and it was you know changed ninja in the patch notes and then everyone got some skill points for free please make this be cargo space and not some other weird specific the hold inside the ship we're gonna get some new command ships which is the destroyer command ships the dragon command corks the algos and the tower and four tier tech tech level nine Command battle cruisers, uh, the Prophecy, the Phyrex, the Mimidon, and the Cyclone. These are command ships and will work in tandem with the command burst module that will be introduced. And it's going to be dropping from scout anomalies. 
these items will be split into three categories. We've got the Shield Command Burst, the Armored Command Burst, and the Skirmish Command Burst. Also got a couple of skills to complement with the new modules. Capital Ship Manufacturing, of course, is going to be introduced. Ship Balance Changes. All ships' shield armor structure have been increased by 5%. But we're going to be seeing down below that also the damage has been increased by some degrees of percentage. So why increase the DPS and why also increase the HP? What is the point of doing both? You either increase one or decrease one. You buff them both, you got the same equation. You just have X equal Z and you multiply it by two in both sides and you have now 2X equal 2Z. What is the point? <laughs> we got some specific bonuses uh, adjustment for tier 10 ships, uh, which is the shield armor structure increase and velocity and signature radius decrease. The Mark II variants of the bombers have a an extra high slot uh, added to all of them from 3 to 4. That is good. But it's still shit because those Mark II variants are shit unless you go specifically for battleships or maybe, I don't know, try to get those freighters or uh, when the Dreadnoughts will be introduced, maybe those will be used for that. But for now, they're shit. The Mark II variants of the Interceptors are going to be uh, re receiving an increase in optimal range of the Warp Scrambler and Warp Disruptor. We get now, we'll get we get now 6% per level instead of just 5%. And a bonus damage increase from 15 to 17.5 across all Mark II Interceptors. Destroyers increase shield, armor and structure by 4.55%. And increase flight velocity to, of all destroyers by 15.55%. I don't know if this is going to be enough. I'll have to run a couple of tests uh, and let you guys know if destroyers are still going to be shit in terms of speed. And if any cruisers are still going to be outmaneuvering them in terms of top speed. Bigger change into the, um, the Interceptor Destroyer class. We got high slots reduced from 4 to just 2. This is because... Uh, nobody would use the, the other types of destroyers and everyone would just go on to the interdictor even though the interdictor is supposed to be uh, to, to have a specific role like to lay down bubbles if you remember from evil line the saber is not only good for laying down bubbles but it's also good as a destroyer the purpose of the destroyer is to get rid of frigates right now <laughs> four high slots to just two this is kind of chopping off one leg and one arm uh, and throwing it and see what happens. This is not good, mate. Low slots increase from 3 to 4, basically to provide more tank or at least more viability in terms of survivability. Increase in velocity, signature radio decrease, blah blah blah. Tank level 4 sniper destroyers. Mid slots reduced from 3 to 2. So they actually had something going on there. Uh, they could fit some electronic warfare. Well, not anymore. Suck it, tick level 4 sniper destroyers. Low slots increase from 3 to 4, yet no extra guns. Also, the tech level 7 assault destroyers, no extra guns. No extra guns were added on any type of destroyer. The assault destroyers received an increase in terms of mid slots and a decrease in terms of low slots. What the fuck? Basically, the assault destroyers should be like brawling ships, okay? You have to get them more low slots than the standard destroyers. Now, you, they've just removed one low slot, meaning your fittings and survivability chances, chances have just been cut down by 25%. Bummer. This seems to be a bug. Uh, at least a typo that is completely propagated throughout the rest of the patch notes. Uh, the cruisers, we've got interceptor cruisers. No, that's not interceptor cruisers. We should have interdictors. Interdiction cruisers. High slots reduced. No more fancy weapons. Mid slots increased. Tech level 10. Interdictor cruisers. Get a bonus in advanced propulsion jamming effect radius bonus to warp disruption field increase from 5% to 10%. Meaning the bubble will be even bigger. <laughs> Crikey. Moving over to the battleships, the Typhoon. Bonus to large missile torpedo explosion velocity per level is now increased from 5% to 
5%. And a big boo for the Dominics. Both the Dominics was a good ship. Drones, on the other hand, still shitty. They're good, but they're still shitty. You've got no management for drones. It's difficult to manage them around. They don't have proper visibility in terms of HP. They die. They don't have faction or at least dead space variants. You're pretty much stuck with shitty Mark uh, drones. And the Dominix gets a nerf for the damage. Needless to say, drones are still the shittiest in terms of damage. Or at least DPS compared to all the other ships of the same class using the same kind of weapons. For example, if you want to compare medium guns with or medium missiles with medium drones, drone DPS will always be smaller. Why are you making life so hard for drone pilots? What's wrong with you? So the Maelstrom will be removed, but the Maelstrom Striker would still get some bonuses. Why the Maelstrom Striker? Every other ship has uh, the Tech Level 9 variant uh, and uh, of the battleship, uh, the main battleship, and then a Tech Level 10 Striker variant. We've got the Raven, and then the Raven Striker. We've got the Apocalypse, and then the Apocalypse Sniper. Yet, on the Minmatar, we get the Tempest, and we should have the Tempest Striker. No, we get the Maelstrom Striker. Oh boy. Now, a bunch of stuff in terms of bonuses to the Striker battleships. Also, big splash of modifications to the Rook as well. Pretty much the same stuff, uh, like the skills being applied, the bonuses being applied. And we here we arrive at the modules. The efficiency of all armor repairs, remote armor repairs, and group armor repairs has increased has been increased by 10%. Also, the adaptive armor hardener effect is now 33%, which is on par with the shield, or at least close enough. The same for the same can be said for the reactive armor hardener or large rapid missile explosion velocity. Uh, was reduced from 81 to 70, meaning now large rapids deal shittier damage against smaller targets. Missile damage, cannon and decomposer damage increased by 4%. We see a reduction in the shield resistance bonus of the shield field modules, a penalty in signature radius adjustment for the shield field modules, the armor link modules will distribute damage before applying armor resistances and large armor link modules will have larger damage transfer rates than before. We'll have to test these out and see how they behave in the new format. It's going to be a long journey, a long heavy week of testing and trying to figure out if the balance update really provide balance or not. Moving on to the PvE adjustments. Fix an issue where the resistance modules of NPC were not working or not taking effect. So now pirates are now even buffed than before, with resistances being even higher. Also, it looks like a fix for the NPC pirates using micro warp drives. You know, those fancy ships orbiting you, orbiting you at 30 kilometers at 6 kilometers per second. Well, I think this one will fix it. Pirates of these modules now have a decrease in velocity. Also adjusted bounties of several encounter missions to match their difficulty. We have no idea which are those. All in all, what I can say is I'm pretty disappointed of this balance update. Mm -mm. Not happy at all. They've added some ships. They've taken out some ships. They've modified a couple of stats and a couple of modules. The only real improvement is, from what I've read is like the armor, and that's it. Destroyers, balance, botched, cruisers, botched, battleships, botched. I could go on. Um, feel free to leave comments below if you think maybe I'm just biased by some or triggered by something, but do throw in a comment and let me know if I'm right or am I wrong, because this is not what I expected. What do you guys think of these updates that will be launching on the public test server? How comfortable are you guys with them? And would you see them like this in the live server in the May update? Yeah, I really wished player feedback and of course content creator feedback would be taken into consideration. We had plenty of ideas. I shared quite a lot of comments that you guys posted on the channel. Quite a lot of information relayed back. From what I can see, nothing was done 
in regards to what the players have criticized and asked for. I don't know, maybe this is just some bigger picture that we don't see yet. Someone has mentioned, I think it was written somewhere, that these some of these actual updates are going to be uh, useful for future content that's going to be introduced. Why mess with the balance from now? I mean, you're going to create a, a four, five months buffer in which the items, modules, or the ships is going to be unusable, well, not entirely unusable, but affected just, for example, in terms of drones. So you're reducing damage on drones just because after uh, August, when Irina is going to be introduced, we'll be getting faction drones. Okay, but up until then, you've just shot us in the foot. I don't know, I'm going, uh, at least I'm going to submit every crap that I find in hopes that it'll be fixed until the May comes along. Destroyers, the only thing good uh, that I, I saw there was the extra speed, and that's pretty much it. We asked for at least an additional high slot. Frigates pee on destroyers, just because it's fun, in order to show dominance, I have no idea. But taking some lows out, not giving highs, just a little bit of speed. I don't know what to say. And we reached uh, that part of the video where we announced the next community question of the week. This week's question is going to be, what do you guys think of the patch notes? Yeah, I'm really interested in what you guys think about this balance update. It's going to be available on the public test server and it's going to hit the live server in May. Is this good? Is this bad? Leave your comments below and let me know. That's it for today. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.